Okay, so how are we gonna start this thing? Like, take me back to the beginning of your whole home journey. What's this vision that's been driving you? It's a funny question. I, I mean, you could answer it a million different ways, but as a real estate broker, I think I've spent my entire 20 something year career putting words in the minds of other people, meaning assuming what other people think about me. What I mean by that is for a long time, it was and maybe still is in some ways my assumption that people care about what kind of car the car guy drives or what kind of shoes the shoe business owner wears. And so I just I thought for a long time, and I think there's some accuracy to this too, by the way, that people want to know where does the real estate broker, where's the real estate author, radio show host, whatever, where's that guy live? What's his house like? In a lot of ways, I think I took pride in disappointing people. What I mean by that is we've always lived in fairly modest homes. What I mean by that is we bought nasty fixer upper foreclosure type homes. By all means, we've turned them into nice, inviting, hospitable homes, but we've never really had the big, super nice, certainly never brand new home that might impress somebody. And honestly, we're doing that now. Not for those reasons, but we are at a place where the size, the scale, the utility of it is one based on our family size and the ways we wanna host we're doing that. So it's funny that my answer to your question of where we began is, well, that's where we are now. But how did we get there? How did I get there? It's silly almost because it has nothing to do with a career. It has to do with being a kid. And finding what drew me in or what I liked about other people and other people's stories. I remember being a little bitty kid. I'm talking probably five or six being in Galveston, where my dad grew up, where my grandparents were, driving through some old neighborhoods in Galveston, Texas, and my dad saying, hey, you see that over there? We used to jump that fence, and we would get fruit off the fruit trees, and then the old man would come out and yell at us, and we'd run off, and it was kind of a fun, you know, silly thing. Like, they knew who we were, they didn't really care. But, and that story stuck in my head for you know, 40 years now. How cool would it be to have a home with trees that grew fruit, but also that other people saw and got excited about and you know wanted access to. To talk about the beginning, to talk about the origin of what we are doing now, that's probably where it started. You know, it, I think it cultivated from that moment into just the way God made me and who I am and learning more and more about that, that I am absolutely somebody by nature that wants to be around and with other people. What I've learned about gifts and weaknesses since then, I tend to be an out front kind of person. My gifts tend to be more in speaking, leading, setting vision, coming up with ideas, kind of bringing everybody else with me. And part of that has been hosting. I love to have people where I am, in my home, in my office, I like to travel with people all the above. So I think even at a young age, as I was sort of unknowingly learning my style, my gift, my nature, anytime I thought about my future home, it involved a bunch of people being, it wasn't just me or me and a spouse or me and kiddos or whatever. By all means, there were these holiday images of family holidays, but they always included guests and parties and events. And so I don't think I've ever been able to separate home with guests but i also love tradition i love history i can remember my grandmother making a big pot of spaghetti in her last years of being able to stand alone uh, we called it suka in our family a big pot of sauce and a big loaf of bread and dipping that in there and playing dean martin and frank sinatra and this giant wood table that was in her kitchen and she would never make it enough on purpose we would line up and fight for Tufali and lasagna and suka in her, in her dining room. And me just thinking, that is it. That, that's what home looks like. People coming into it to eat with you and meet with you and tell stories with you. And the, the kids would sit over here and the adults would sit over here and the boys would play poker and the girls would talk over here. All these things that have evolved into our family's version of that. But if the question is, how did you get here to this stage of having a home that others might like or be inspired by? But from the earliest days, apple trees and spaghetti sauce and music in the kitchen 
and parties and holidays and poker games and watching ball games together and those traditions that all centered around home have been the things that have honestly never allowed me to feel fully settled in any house, any apartment, any place I've ever lived until, I can't say now, until hopefully very soon when we move into our newest home and have thought through all of those things as we've designed it, it will not be perfect. It will not check every box, but we certainly believe more than ever the fullness of that vision, those ideas I had from a very early age will get to be fulfilled in the structure and in the life that that structure allows and provides for and protects and creates space for. So did I answer the question? I think so.